Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel Studios' Fantastic Four frontman may finally be confirmed as Pedro Pascal. To complete the Fantastic Four lineup, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, Eben Moss Backrack as Ben Grimm, the Thing, and Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. These names have been floated around for several months, as all of Marvel fandom has eagerly awaited the news of Marvel's first family. And yes, as their frontman, they're going with an actor currently helming several other franchises, but now Marvel Studios is claiming him like mine. This Fantastic Four movie is being directed by Matt Shackman, who directed episodes of WandaVision and co-created Monarch Legacy of Monsters for Apple TV+. The current draft of the script is being written by Josh Friedman, who wrote the script for Avatar The Way of Water. Pedro Pascal played Oberyn Martell in Game of Thrones, The Mandalorian Din Djarin on The Mandalorian, and Joel in The Last of Us on HBO, as Mando Pascal has largely played the role via voiceover only, as his character is under his helmet for most of it, and many of the physical scenes were done by Latif Crowder and Brendan Wayne. Pascal shouldn't have any issues balancing his commitments in Star Wars titles then, which includes an upcoming Mando and Grogu movie, but we will see about The Last of Us because production for The Last of Us second season is taking place in February in British Columbia. Pedro Pascal has been spotted at award shows in early January wearing a sling that he claimed was from a fall, but at January 19th, he was at the Sundance Film Festival at the premiere of Freaky Tales and he was not wearing the sling. You may remember John Krasinski played a different version of Reed Richards in the MCU in 2022's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness after a long fan campaign to see him as a character and his wife Emily Blunt as Sue Storm. That Reed was killed by the Scarlet Witch, this read presumably will be in the main MCU sacred timeline that Marvel execs have designated as the 616 universe. Vanessa Kirby is perhaps best known for playing the White Widow in the past few Mission Impossible films and playing Princess Margaret in the first two seasons of The Crown on Netflix and roles in Hobbs and Shaw and Napoleon. She's such a good actor. And I gotta say, there seems to be a trend among Marvel Studios casting directors to hire actors from prestige royal dramas like Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, The Crown, Succession, you could say. And it's perhaps because the actors in those shows have to humanize royals from real world or fictional histories and carry them with gravitas, which translates to the type of range and ensemble interplay that they need to come across on the big screen in these Marvel movies. Eben Moss Bacharach, though, has to be the most exciting actor, in my opinion, from various roles over the past few years, playing Richie, aka Cousin on The Bear, a quite memorable role in Star Wars Andor, and playing the hacker Micro in The Punisher, in a very unhinged guest starring role in HBO's Girls, and all the way back to President John Adams' son in HBO's John Adams. Moss Backrack's role as Micro in Punisher is now interesting because Marvel Studios recently confirmed the Marvel Netflix series, including Daredevil, Punisher, Defenders, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, all to be canon to the MCU continuity. But Moss Backrack wouldn't be the first overlap of this kind. Mahershal Ali played Cornell Stokes in Luke Cage, and now he's playing Blade. Alfred Woodard played Mariah Dillard in Luke Cage, and she played the grieving mother Miriam Sharp in Captain America Civil War. Jimmy Chan and Michelle Yeoh have both played multiple MCU characters. Martin Starr played roles in both the 2008 Incredible Hulk film and Peter Parker's teacher in the MCU Spider-Man films, and he was actually later confirmed to be the same character. And Joseph Quinn recently delighted us as Eddie Munson in season four of Stranger Things, but over the years, he's had roles in Game of Thrones, in the Catherine the Great miniseries, and in 2024, will appear in A Quiet Place Day 1 and Gladiator 2. So, a bit of background, the Fantastic Four is, of course, the team that established Marvel Comics as the solid brand that it is. Created in 1961 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, bringing in a new tone of realism and family dynamics to the medium of comics. Because until the Fantastic Four, superheroes weren't really in teams. The Fantastic Four was the first time Marvel heroes came together to form a team. A failed space mission left these four with unique powers. Their arch villain is Dr. Victor Von Doom, a college colleague of Reed Richards and Ben Grimm, and a mastermind from Latveria who becomes the greatest of all time in science and magic. They've also faced various time traveling entities known as Kang the Conqueror, who first appeared to them as Pharaoh Ramatut in ancient Egypt. They faced Galactus, devourer of worlds, a cosmic entity who feasts on planets by consuming their energy. His herald is, of course, the Silver Surfer. The team is led by Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, the smartest scientist alive with the power of elasticity, Susan Storm, the invisible woman, Reed's girlfriend and eventual wife, Susan's brother, Johnny Storm, the human torch who can flame on and fly, and Ben Grimm, the thing, it's clobbering time, Reed's college roommate and best friend transformed into an orange rock-like humanoid with super strength. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. We've all got goals, better work-life balance, stress management, being more optimistic, but figuring out how to tackle big goals like that on your own can be difficult. Connecting with a licensed therapist through BetterHelp can help. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and less intimidating for a lot of people. The right therapist for you might not be in your area, and some people struggle with the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even via instant message, whatever's the most comfortable version for you. BetterHelp has over 30,000 therapists in their network to choose from. To get started, you simply fill out the questionnaire that will ask you about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like. Then BetterHelp will match you with a therapist, and in most cases, 
it'll take less than 48 hours. Schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. And if for any reason you feel like your therapist is not a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of the button at no additional cost. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash new rock stars. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. On film, the Fantastic Four appeared in a 1994 Roger Corman film. Very low budget, but you know, a charmer. But they were put in a much higher profile 2005 film from Fox starring Yoan Griffith as Reed Richards, Jessica Alba as Sue Storm, Chris Evans as Johnny Storm, a role that would lead to him getting cast as Steve Rogers in the MCU, and Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm, and Julian McMahon as Doctor Doom. This film got a sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, in 2007 with Lawrence Fishburne voicing the Silver Surfer, the Herald of Galactus, and Galactus in this movie was presented as a nebulous cloud in space. In 2015, the franchise was rebooted by director Josh Trank, with Miles Teller as Reed Richards, Kate Mara as Sue Storm, Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm, Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm, and Toby Kebbell as Doom, but the film was considered a commercial and critical bomb. With Disney's acquisition of Fox's film and TV properties in 2018, that made it so that the X-Men, Deadpool, and Fantastic Four could now appear in Marvel Studios productions, and whereas Marvel Studios may have issues with past problematic legacy producers from the Fox era of X-Men films when it comes to any future specific live-action films with X-Men in the title, Title, the Fantastic Four has been a title that Kevin Feige has wanted to prioritize. John Watts was originally attached to direct the film, but at D23 in 2022, Feige confirmed Matt Shackman will now be directing the film. So what does it tell us that Marvel Studios is going with a Reed Richards played by an actor who is 48 years old currently, and a Sue Storm played by an actor who's only 35? Well, this is hardly Hollywood's largest age gap between leads written to be romantically involved, and it is possible that this film focuses less on their marriage and their romantic relationship, but we should acknowledge that the Richards family plays an important role in their story, at least as we know it in the MCU. Their kids are Franklin Richards and Valeria Richards. The John Krasinski version of Reed Richards in Multiverse of Madness did hint at a wife and kids, and Franklin Richards is known as an Omega-level mutant, but really the Richards lineage is most relevant to the current MCU in the fact that Reed and Sue's descendant a thousand years into the future is Nathaniel Richards, aka Kang. Marvel Studios announced that Jonathan Majors is no longer going to be playing Kang in the future, but rumor has it that Oscar-nominated actor Coleman Domingo could be recast in the role. There have been other rumors saying Marvel Studios may be looking at John David Washington for the role. Pedro Pascal being 48 puts him at the right age to have been roommates with this movie's Ben Grimm, Evan Moss Backrack, who is 46. And some of the more popular versions of Reed Richards in the comics have been a middle-aged man with more of a salt and pepper hair color. We want him to be kind of an elder statesman of the MCU. And I think two of these leads, Pushing 50, tells us that Matt Shackman's Fantastic Four might not be an origin story. Perhaps a story that flashes back in time to their origin, but really just refocuses them in a context conflict in the present day. And if you watch Monarch Legacy of Monsters, you know how much that show jumped around and played with timelines and timeline dilation, crossing into alternate realms, all things that could show up in this movie. So what Avengers level conflict will this Fantastic Four film have? Let's talk about Galactus. In my view, the stage is perfectly set in the MCU for Galactus to come to put an end to the baffling suffering of most of the characters in the MCU planet Earth, in which Marvel still wants us to think that all these stories are connected despite gaping plot holes formed whenever these titles do not logically align. Like does the Marvel take place after Secret Invasion? Why does it seem to be two different takes on Nick Fury? Really, Earth was marked for destruction by the emergence of the Celestial Tiamat, a process that the Eternal stalled, but Tiamat's marble corpse has remained stuck in the Indian Ocean ever since, referenced only by a random headline that we saw for a few seconds in She-Hulk. That visible from space pimple on Earth's surface should make this planet an appetizing feast for Galactus. Now, to be clear, Galactus's mission in the comics isn't like to be a gluttonous binge eater eating every planet like apples, but rather he's kind of a Galactus galactic custodian who clears worlds and systems that are on the decline so that they don't clutter up the cosmos or start getting desperate and taking drastic universe threatening measures to cling to survival. We actually saw this in the Marvels as Kree General Darbin began tearing holes in the fabric of space and of reality to try to revive the dying Kree home world. You gotta imagine Galactus would be particularly upset by all the incursions being caused by the dwellers of Terra and these other planets that we know of in the MCU and could now be targeting them to finish the job the Celestials couldn't complete. Facing Galactus this way could be how the MCU Fantastic Four face a classic villain while pivoting into the multiverse saga. But another option could just be Kang, who as of now still seems to be the multiverse saga's big bad. However, I would just be surprised if the main storyline in the Fantastic Four film dealt with the Richards relationship with Kang the Conqueror through their lineage to Nathaniel Richards, because that would introduce the family to mainstream audiences as one just kind of entangled in this multiverse saga. And historically, what's been great about the Fantastic Four is that they brought a sense of grounded realism to the Marvel world. I suppose there could be a subplot about Reed and Sue debating whether to have kids because that would lead to a Kang 
one day. But you know, it would also be a bit weird to see the leads of this movie, Pedro Pascal and Vanessa Kirby acting that out. I think it's more likely that this movie ends in a post credit scene that connects Reed Richards to the John Krasinski Reed Richards as we meet a council of Reeds. Like multiverse in the post credit scene, but not in the movie's runtime. A third option, the classic, Doctor Doom. With Doctor Doom as the villain, that would make the conflict a personal grudge between old college rivals. Reed, Victor, and Ben is part of that. In the comics, Ben Grimm is one who sabotages Victor's device that caused a huge falling out between the roommates, Reed and Victor, and Victor drops out of college and returns to Latveria. So really, you can imagine the drama in a Fantastic Four movie looking kind of like the social network, when college drama ends up having like global consequences when these boys never grow up and they continue to hold these grudges. Personally, I want to see that kind of Doom storyline in a sequel, where the story could be refocused as a Doom-centric story, the way Christopher Nolan's sequel in his Batman trilogy was so focused on the Joker in the second story, and this way we could spend more of the second movie's runtime with the Doom character without needing to spend as much time on the main four. Look, we're going to learn more about the Fantastic Four in the days ahead, but if this does get confirmed on Valentine's Day, the following day, February 15th, New Rockstars' live show will be happening in West Hollywood, and it's going to be the best place to come hang out with us and talk about this insane news. Tickets are still available from the link in the description. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. I'm Eric Voss. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.